Welcome back to another episode of Penn State Sports Night. I'm Leanna Rizzi and I'm here with Aaron Johnson and we are here to talk about college football this past weekend. It's been quite the dominating week in college football. We have seen five top 10 teams blow out their opponents this week by a minimum of 39 points. Plus, some unranked teams have created some major upsets that have changed the rankings after this weekend. What do you think about unranked Mississippi State taking down number four Texas A&M this week? I could not believe the outcome. Texas A&M is a powerhouse with some very strong players, and they moved from number four to number 10. A jump such as this one so far in the season drastically changes the dynamic of the top 10. You never know what could happen from here on out. What other teams do you see stealing a spot in the top 10 over these next three weeks? Well, I definitely do not see anyone stealing a top four spot in these last few weeks. Those spots belong to Alabama, Michigan, Clemson, and Washington without a doubt in my mind. I can see Wisconsin and West Virginia moving up a few spots. Both of those teams had really solid seasons, and at this point it comes out of consistency. What are your predictions of Penn State football for the rest of the season? I think we have come a very long way this season. From being unranked to number 12 and predicted to be in the top 10 is incredible. I definitely see Penn State grabbing the number 10 spot if we keep up the momentum going the way we are in these next three games. And we're back here on Penn State Sports Night. I'm Mike Marcantonini alongside Jack Hirsch. And Jack, we're here to talk a little Penn State basketball. The team kicked off their season with an exhibition game against Lock Haven last Friday, and they'll officially open their regular season with a non-conference game against Albany this coming Friday. First thing I want to ask you is about Mike Watkins, a guy who was redshirted for academic reasons last year, but he's going to play this year and he has a chance to make a big impact. What can we expect from Watkins? Well, yeah, first of all, we don't know exactly why Watkins redshirted last year. Right. Or Chambers won't announce that. We think it's because of some academic eligibility concern, but we really have no basis. But I agree with Chambers' uh, philosophy in not telling the media because we, we just don't need to know that. I mean, it's the same thing with Franklin going back to not announcing why Garrett Sickles missed a half of the Ohio State game. It's, it's the right move. It's good for coaching. It's good for learning right. and so experience. Now that, so now that this guy's on the court this year, what, what do we expect from him play-wise? So he's going to split time with Julian Moore at the center position. Uh, he played 20 minutes to Moore's 19 minutes after Moore started the game against Lockhaven. But his numbers were impressive. He shot 7 from 11 from the field, scored 15 points, had 9 rebounds in just, in just 20 minutes. And he actually had an even more impressive game in a secret scrimmage uh, the team played in Philadelphia against Seton Hall uh, in October. He had uh, the same scoring output, same rebounding output in two less minutes, in 18 minutes. Um, he dominated the paint against Lockhaven. Granted, Lockhaven didn't have a guy that could go up against him. The tallest guy sure. on their team was only 6'7". But what he showed is he could really dominate the paint and grab every board uh, gone, going his way. And if he, if he could learn how to shoot the three, I mean, we're looking at a special player right there. Yeah, talk about a big man who can shoot from outside, a lethal weapon to have on any team. All right, moving on, let's talk about the, the true freshman on this team. Watkins, a guy coming in this year as a redshirt freshman. How about some of the true freshmen, specifically Tony Carr? What do we expect from this class this year? Well, surprisingly, Chambers a couple weeks ago announced that Tony Carr is going to start for this team week uh, day one against Albany, and he, and he started against Lockhaven, played the most minutes of anybody on the team at 30, and led, uh, tied Watkins and uh, fellow true freshman Lamar, or sorry, no, he didn't. He tied with Josh Reeves for the team lead in scoring, where they each had 15 points. Uh, now, shooting wasn't that great, didn't make a three-point shot, shot 5 for 11 with the field, which is pretty good for a guard. Sure. Um, his passing looked really good, and his movements on the court is just smooth. I, I thought he was like a chocolate fondue fountain, smooth as silk, baby. Uh, I like that. Well, watching Tony Carr is something special. I think we're looking at a really special player here. I mean, uh, Carr, along with Lamar Stevens, who is also a freshman, and Nazir Bostic, they all came from Roman Catholic. And they won their, the state, uh, Pennsylvania State uh, uh, High School Championship last year in Quad A. And uh, I think uh, they keep playing like this, we could be winning bigger championships right, than right. just and, the And that team chemistry could go a long way. And another guy that went to Roman Catholic, not in the same class as these three, but Shep Garner. Now, Shep, coming in this year as a junior, had a really solid sophomore season last year, was inconsistent at times. But he's really a team leader now that Brandon Taylor is gone. Is he ready for that team leader role? Yes, Coach Chambers has been livid about uh, uh, Gardner's improvement with leadership and showing these young guys around. Now, he said at his media day press conference that the young guys, specifically Bostic and Stevens and are because he knows all of them from Rome, and despite not playing with Stevens for the, uh, because Stevens only played at Rome in his senior year, but 
Um, he told them, they came to him with so many questions and he c could give them all the answers they needed. Now with his play e on the court, he didn't have the cleanest game against Lockhaven. He only shot four from ten from the field, only made his first three-pointer in the second half, and only made three for the entire game. But when he did get it going, he played really well in the second half and he scored and he ended up with 13 points after having three at halftime. So that was pretty impressive. Now with three-point shooting at a, as a whole can be hit or miss with this team as Shep Gardner's three threes against Lockhaven were the only three threes for the entire team. So that's something to look out for because if Carr can get it going, we got Davis Zimgoulis who's also improved from behind the arc. If they can get going from three, I mean, they scored 91 points against Lockhaven with only three threes. I mean, a lot of us thought they could have scored 100 and they could have if they had shot better from behind no the doubt. arc. No doubt. Uh, one more thing I want to ask you. Peyton Banks, another veteran on this team, a guy who should have a solid impact this year, but he's coming in to the regular season a little banged up. How much of an impact is his injury going to have? Yeah, uh, Coach Chambers was asked about this uh, during uh, uh, his uh, media availability before the Lockhaven game, and uh, he said it's a bit of concern. He, uh, Peyton's got a, a hamstring pull, and uh, no one knows with that. I mean, we could be looking at a couple weeks. He's, it doesn't look uh, good for the Albany game right now. He did not play at all during uh, you know, against Lockhaven. And uh, we just don't know, but um, the team's not missing him right now. I mean, L Lamar Pretty Stevens. Lamar Stevens is uh, playing. Got the chance to start against Lockhaven, as I said, and he, I forgot to mention that he collected a double double, um, in, uh, starting in Peyton Banks's place. So uh, it might not be Lamar Stevens who gets taken out if uh, if uh, Banks returns. It could be Josh Reeves. We don't know because uh, Chambers did something interesting in the fact that he started three guards. Um, and it's interesting because those three are three of the four guys that Chambers said Ed could play point guard this right. year, in addition right. to Terrence Samuel, who came over from UConn this semester. Right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Coach Pat Chambers does this year. has a pretty versatile lineup, has a deep lineup. So we will see. It should be an exciting season for the Nittany Lions on the hardwood. That's going to do it um, for this segment, talking Penn State basketball. Keep it locked on Penn State Sports Night. We're talking some football up next. Hello and welcome back to this week's edition of Penn State Sports Night. I'm Dylan Huberman. I'm David Brown. Hey Dylan, let's get into some of the toss-ups in the divisions this week. Yeah, um, the AFC South, this is a very tight division. You have the Texans leading and the Colts in second. The Colts just went into Lambeau and beat the Packers. A very, very tough place to play. So what do you think of that? It was a great game. I think one of the best players in that game was Andrew Luck. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the reason I think the Colts could come back in this division and potentially go to the playoffs. I agree with that. Uh, you look towards the AFC West last night, a very big showdown between the Raiders and the Broncos, Sunday Night Football. Great game, yeah. yeah. Raiders taking the W, 30-20. to 20. What do you think of that division now? Uh, I think it's a really tight one, obviously. I think it's really fun to watch the Raiders now. It's the first time I think, since 2011 that they're leading in the division. Yeah. And they beat a team like the Broncos, who are obviously just came off the Super Bowl. It's really exciting for them and their organization and obviously their fans. It's been a while since the Raiders have had seven wins in this it's been point. been too long. Season. Yeah. Uh, also, now we go to the NFC. You have the NFC East, the Cowboys on top right now. Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott look like they're two Hall of Famers, yeah. they're two rookies. What do you have to think? Yeah, I mean, they don't look like rookies out there, obviously. They're, they're killing teams. They went right. out there and did what they were supposed to do, and they just pounded the Cleveland Browns. They beat them down. It was, it was just a dominant game for the Cowboys, mm -hmm. once again. Look like the Cleveland Browns missed the flight to go play. Yeah, right. Uh, now you have the NFC North. The Vikings now having a big skid three in a row. They fall to five and three. They are still atop the division, but the Lions looking pretty good, and they just beat them. What do you got to say to that? Yeah, I think that's another kind of unpredictable division just because you have the Packers, you have the Vikings, who both shown they're good teams, and then you have the Lions who are playing, who weren't a favorite at all in the beginning of the season, but... We're going to see how that one plays out. It's going to be a, a tight race, I think, all the way to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And now let's move on to the playoff picture. If it ended today, the Patriots would be the one seed in the AFC, the Raiders the two, and then you look to the NFC, the Cowboys the one, and the Falcons the two. Where do you think these teams are going in the playoffs? Well, I think all these teams are deservedly so, the first and second seeds. Mm -hmm. And I think they've shown that every week. The Cowboys, they've won, what, seven straight now? Right, yeah. And they're proving why. I mean... Their offense is dominant out there, and their defense has been playing good enough, even with some injuries, to keep their offense ahead in the game. Mm. After a slim loss to the Giants in week one, they just haven't been able to be stopped by anybody. Yep. So now, let's go into the future a little bit. Who's your Super Bowl? I got the Pats. I mean, Tom Brady, 
You see what he's done the, his first four games back? I think he's thrown for 1,300 yards, 12 touchdowns, no interceptions. He's just – he's being Tom Brady again. Possible MVP pick, even though he missed the first four games. I agree with that possible MVP pick. However, my New York Giants are slotting at that wild card, and we know what happens when the Giants get to the playoff with the Patriots. <laughs> so thank you very much for tuning in to Penn State Sports Night. For Dylan Huberman and David Brown, thank you for tuning in.